Welcome all of you to this session, uh, and on behalf of the Board of Directors of, of HEADS uh, Consortium, I would like to welcome you to, uh, to our uh, 2014 uh, Best Practices Showcase celebrating uh, technology innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Alfredo Calderon, and I will be in charge of introducing uh, the speakers of this uh, breakout session. Uh, although we uh, have uh, time for questions at the end, the presenters will let you know whether uh, you will be uh, able to address your questions at any time during the presentation. Uh, this presentation will be in English, so if you need uh, translation, it will be up, it's available. Uh, you have to request the, the headphones if you don't have them available. They are available at the back of the room or in the registration area. Uh, we will appreciate that you change your uh, mobile phone uh, to vibration or silent mode in order to have your full attention uh, during this uh, session. Uh, finally, uh, please make sure you complete the evaluation form that I will be handing out in a few minutes. And when you complete it, leave it at the end of your uh, row and I will pick it up. Now we are ready to start. Uh, the title of, of this presentation is uh, scaling up a student support network for Latino students. And the team that's going to present is composed of four uh, colleagues. We have Dr. Margot uh, Edling, uh, the associate, uh, associate professor in the academic uh, literacy uh, department and faculty fellow for the Office of Academic Affairs from uh, Queensboro Community College from the CUNY system. We have uh, Professor Elizabeth Lachner, Lachner, Director of Institutional Research and Assessment from uh, Com uh, Queensboro Community College. We have Dr. Paul Marquis, the Academic Affairs Dean, also from uh, uh, QCC. And finally, but not least, we have Amadi. Amadi, Amadi Henders uh, Henderson, uh, Quality Data and Analyst. Uh, and certified, what is that, SSN, SSN? Oh, <laughs> ah, student, oh, okay, they abbreviated, so I'm, okay. I'm not good with acronyms, so. That's okay. Uh, also, for, uh, for early alert, uh, for the early alert, uh, alert project at Queens uh, Borough Community College. Here are the presenters. Actually, let me start the okay. podium. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, we want to talk to you about our experiences, uh, first of all, developing uh, basically it's a student support network based on technology. And this was something we began a few years ago. Um, and since then, we scaled it up college-wide. Okay. A little background about Queensboro Community College. Uh, it's part of the City University of New York system. Uh, we have an, uh, uh, an enrollment of about a little bit over a thousand, uh, 16,000 students. And we are kind of unique because Queensboro is actually the most ethnically diverse city in the world, and our student population reflects that. We have approximately equal representation between white, black, Hispanics, and Asian. And, and when we talk about, for example, the whites, it's actually very, you know, it's not only American. It's that, you know, we get a lot of Russians, we get a lot of people from Europe. We get a lot of people from you know, all over the place. Um, we are a minority serving institution. We're a Hispanic serving institution. Like many community colleges and like many community colleges in New York City, we do have a problem with the retention and graduation rates. Uh, here are some numbers for the last um, Actually, they're not that up to date. But you get a sense of uh, the second column there. That's the number of uh, percent of students that received a degree after three years. Uh, we have a 23% uh, retention rate, approximately, uh, after three years. And um, overall, these numbers aren't good. So um, we've been working with you know, with other community colleges who have been doing a lot of you know, research, a lot of study, to try to find out ways to actually increase these numbers. Uh, the project was actually 
something that our previous president uh, initiated. It was the academy, is what he called the academy's model. And the idea was to bring um, a holistic approach to helping the student. A lot of times we talk about you know, student affairs, academic affairs, and you know, other support services. What we wanted to do is we wanted to bring all the divisions of the college together and coordinate them, coordinate them more effectively. And part of that involved having what we called uh, freshman coordinators or student coordinators who would actually reach out to the student and help them navigate the system. And they would contact them anytime they were having trouble. Uh, and, and, but that was the idea. The only thing is we didn't know that the students were in, you know, having academic problems until after the semester was over and then they got an F. So we started working, um, we got a grant with, uh, from IBM and we started working on an early alert system and we developed actually, we actually developed one of the first early alert systems in the country which we piloted in the fall of 2010. Uh, we had very good results, and then since then we've, we've been scaling it up. Uh, uh, most recently we got like a CUNY uh, SSRP grant to help us evaluate the system, and we also got a Gates Foundation grant to help us um, disseminate information to the faculty. Because th starting last year, we actually scaled up the, the student support network, that's what we call it now, we scaled it up college-wide. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm, I'm okay here. So again, we started it, as my colleague Paul said, the reason that we started it is we want comprehensive help for the students. We want to be able to help them immediately, the minute they're starting to have problems. We don't want to wait till the end of the semester. By then, we've already lost them. So the idea with early alert is to get them within the first few weeks of the semester and by the withdrawal dates the official withdrawal dates of the college so that we could help them get the help that they needed. Um, the reason that we moved from our own homegrown system, which we were very fond of but was not quite as functional as we would have liked, um, we wanted something that would give more feedback to faculty and close the loop. Um, faculty, myself included because I, I bridge the gap between administration and faculty and I would put an alert out there and I would ask my students, did anybody contact you? You know, I, there's an alert on you, I'm concerned. No, no, everything's fine. Of course, everything wasn't fine. Um, so we needed a better feedback system and um, some other administrators in the college saw a demonstration of Starfish and so we chose Starfish retention systems as the, the technology that we would use. Although um, I've been to a couple of other presentations a, a, over the last a couple of days, and I know that there are a few others out there. Um, we wanted clear communication of student issues. We wanted to be able to flag students directly to advisors or to learning centers where they could get tutoring. We wanted messages to go not only to the advisors to reach out, but to the students as well so that they were notified. And so there was sort of saturation of communication. Um, we wanted to be able to follow up and have feedback go back to the faculty so that they knew that they weren't putting this information as they had said many times. It felt like it was going into a black hole. Information, they put a flag out on the students and they didn't know what happened. And finally, we wanted a system that could help us generate reports that we could gather data to see how students were doing, not only in the semester that they were in, but we could keep track of them longitudinally. So, the system, I'm, I'm going to skip a few, I'm a minimalist about slides, so I'm going to skip to actual screenshots, and I'm okay with you interrupting me, so if you want me to go back or forward, just let, just, you know, wave. The faculty can, myself included, can raise flags in the following categories. So if we're concerned that they're late, that they're not attending, that they're unprepared for class, that they have poor class performance, or they're in danger of failing. One of the things that we did, and I felt as a faculty member informing the system, is that we would wait to keep the in danger of failing flag and prevent faculty from clicking that very early on in the semester. We're not going to present about it today, but what we found in an initial um, study of the system is if you said they were failing within the first couple of weeks, 
It wasn't necessarily a predictor, but it, it became a self-fulfilling prophecy rather than, you see, I knew that student was no good, not necessarily true. So we withheld that a little bit later in the semester. Um, but again, and I teach developmental studies, so I teach both uh, ESL students and native speakers of English. They're developmental, they're underprepared for college. If you don't get them right away, get the book. Get the book within the first week. Get the book within the next three. I mean, they would go, as I heard at a presentation today, until November with no textbook. So this helps faculty alert students. And the students get an email, and I can show you some screenshots of that, and then the faculty get emails as well. We also have an opportunity, because in our old system, faculty were putting in positive comments, thinking that the students were getting them, and they weren't, because we hadn't designed the system that way. Starfish allows us to set kudos. So if we wish, we can say to a student, you know what, you're doing a great job. And for some students, that might make the difference so that they don't feel anonymous. And amongst 16,000 students, even though our campus is only 56 acres and it's physically a tiny campus, they can get lost. Um, these are the tutoring centers that we have a separate tutoring center for academic literacy, which does reading and writing tutoring for native speakers and ESL speakers uh, to get them prepared and help them in their developmental um, zero credit courses. There's a campus writing center for uh, English and all other writing that students may need help with. We have a math learning center that does developmental and credit bearing tutoring. And we have a student learning center that tutors in other subject areas. So they can be referred to all of those places. We send out a reminder to faculty what we found helpful is that we have specific weeks that we target because we remember we're leaving it open to all our faculty, and they can flag all of our 16,000 plus students. It's a lot of students, so we have felt that having contained times from, this, from Sunday of the beginning of this week to the end of to Saturday of that week to encompass weekend classes as well as weekday classes, flag them. And then that gives the advisors about a week to read the reports and contact students before there's another um, onslaught of we have another several thousand students. So just to give us some breaks, and we do that from the second week of the semester all the way up until the withdrawal period ends for the semester. Um, faculty can complete a survey that looks somewhat like this, and this is what it would look like. So I've already discussed what the flags are, but they go in and they click what they need, and they can also add additional comments. But we learn from our mistakes and we try to give them more flags to choose from rather than have them write very extensive comments that we had to read through for functionality. Um, they can also raise individual concerns. Many faculty would contact me and one of my roles in academic affairs is to coordinate the efforts and the IT people supporting this and the faculty who need help. Um, well, you know, this doesn't match up with when I'm giving my tests. The whole class of all the faculty rosters, that all the rosters are available during the alert periods that we set up, but at any time during the semester, if a faculty has a very particular concern about an individual student, they can go in, they can look for that student by name, and they can raise a flag if they need to. Um, and again, this is just, I've already explained this, but this gives you a screenshot of what a particular thing that they, what it actually looks like to the faculty. And this is what it looks like to the advisors. So the advisors go in, they get information about the students, and they can begin, in addition to the students getting an email generated by the system automatically, the, fac uh, the advisors can call them. Because students don't always read their emails, uh, especially the college email. They'll say, well, you didn't send it to my email. Well, we did, just not the one at home. And I'm sure you're all familiar with that problem. And the advisor can also make contact. Um, they can take action and they can tell us if an, a flag has been cleared, meaning they met with the student and the problem has been resolved, or if they've not had any contact with the student at all. Um, and again, the tutoring centers can see this and they can book a, a, appointments with the students directly. And this is all through Starfish. I'm going through this kind of quickly again if you need me to go back, but you just have a sense of the screenshots. Um, there is a documented process and then the faculty will get an email back telling them what the outcome was. Either they contacted the student, the student said they were doing their work, the student said they would go to tutoring, um, the, they couldn't get in touch with the student, the information wasn't uh, 
but at least the faculty know, well, this student is not responding, this student is, and they have some idea. Um, what was really helpful about going to a new system, you have to teach faculty how to use a new system. My colleagues will discuss some of that uh, as they present some of the data for how the system is working with the actual students. But um, it helps when you, it helps to have had the momentum of the, the in-house system. I think that if you look at our participating faculty, this is the numbers across the semester since we started the implementation as a pilot. And then going into fall 13 when we started with Starfish, we went from 37% of full -time, combined full-time and uh, part-time faculty to 49% at the end of this semester, this fall semester. So it's a significant increase in the number of faculty participating. And having had that momentum of the pilots and then the word of mouth, I think that helped us get off to such a successful start with a new system. I don't know that we would have been, had that much participation if this were brand new. Um, and just briefly, we did a survey of where they're concentrated in terms of what um, courses are using the system the most. The math department, which in our um, particular college, does both developmental math for students uh, needing remediation and also their credit bearing courses in one department are the biggest users of the system. Most probably because they have, math is problematic for a lot of our students. It's not, I'm not telling you anything brand new. So their usage was the highest. After that was the English department, um, which uncharacteristically is separate from the academic literacy which does the reading and writing developmental and then the academic literacy department which does developmental English reading and writing for native and non-native speakers. So those were the departments that use it the most. After that um, the sciences, we coded the sciences um, although we have them broken down by individual subject we've color coded them and they are also popular users and some of the social sciences, speech, business. And those are the faculty that are, faculty in those departments seem to be using them the most. Um, anecdotally, it seems to me that the adjuncts like the system as much as the faculty, uh, full-time faculty, if not more, because since they're transient faculty, it's nice to be able to be able to connect in a way to the university. And this is accessible to you on or off campus. So we have, you can log in, the login is, is the same as your email, so that you don't have to remember a different password, it's the same email and password login. We send them a link in the emails that we send them, but there's a link, if you go to the faculty technology, we have a tab on the web page that if you go under technology for the faculty, they can find the Starfish login there along with their email and other logins that they need, so that it's very easy and intuitive them, for them to use. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Elizabeth Lackner. She's the Director of Institutional Research, and she's a lot better with the numbers than I am, so thank you. Hello. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about our first efforts to assess this, the, the, this initiative and the system in the sense, does it make a difference to student learning and the outcome? Um, so right now we have looked at mostly short-term measures. Um, we looked at course completion rates, course pass rates in developmental courses and C or better in credit-bearing courses and at uh, unofficial withdrawal rates. Keep in mind we want to increase retention and graduation and one big issue uh, on our campus is that Many students uh, start a class and then stop coming, but they never officially withdraw from the course. Then they get an F in the end of the semester, and um, and they it's, it's actually a WU, but it's the same as an F. It affects the GPA exactly the same way. It affects the financial aid exactly the same way. So it's really negative on them, and then no way closer to graduation. Uh, so we looked at those measures um, to see if this initiative has an impact. And keep in mind that with the system, with the early alert, um, we reach um, more unprepared students, right? So a faculty will flag a student. Uh, of course, now we have kudos, but I'm referring to now those who were flagged with academic alerts. They would do so if a student is struggling. So we can't just say, all right, so let's compare the students that 
were reached out with this initiative to those who weren't, and they should do better because we, we used our support network on them because they are weaker to begin with. So what we tried to do is we, uh, we looked at the combination of being alerted and then for the course that they were alerted, did they or did they not seek tutoring? Did they actually uh, get help in the learning centers? So the combination of um, being flagged and having tutoring, what does that um, effect uh, tell us? And so we, we, we broke down our student pool into four groups. So we're looking at students who weren't flagged in the system and did go for tutoring. So you can call them the very proactive students. They're on top of things and those are great students. Then we have students who weren't flagged but also didn't go to tutoring. Then we have students who were flagged in the system, had some academic alerts, and had tutoring for their course, and that's the group that we want to increase and we want to focus on. And then there's the students who were alerted in the system but didn't go for tutoring, and that's the group we want to bring down, we want to get more students uh, to tutoring. So we wanted to look at those four groups in terms of our uh, outcome measures. And again, um, those who went for tutoring but weren't flagged, they did really great. But what we also found, and that's very encouraging, is that the difference that tutoring made was stronger among the flagged students than it was among the students that weren't flagged. So for instance, here when you look at course completion rates among developmental courses in reading, writing, and math, all courses together, for those three terms where we had a college-wide, fall 12, spring 13, and fall 13. And uh, so students who uh, <clears throat> were flagged in the tu in, through the system and had tutoring, their course completion rate was 73%, which is the top graph. And those who were flagged but didn't go for tutoring, it was only 46%. So the difference was 26%. That's what tutoring uh, made difference here. Compared to students who weren't flagged, the difference was only 15%. So that was encouraging for us to see similar pattern with credit bearing courses in terms of completion rate. The difference that tutoring made was 19% among the flagged student pool and only 4% among the non-flagged students. Same with course pass rates. Similarly, although not s such an extreme difference in, in that, but we did see that, again, uh, flag students are weaker, their pass rate is lower, but if they did go for tutoring, 14% more would pass the course where, uh, where if uh, the students who weren't flagged went for tutoring, there's an 11% difference. With, um, credit bearing courses, again, it was higher, the difference. And then with the de decrease of unofficial withdrawal rates, we were happy to see that also tutoring made a difference. So students who were flagged and went for tutoring, 14% um, more of them, um, or fewer of them rather, had of unofficial withdrawals compared to 7%. And for credit courses, it was eight versus 3%. Any questions about this graphs? Because it takes a little time to understand. You good? Okay, so the, the big story here is that although uh, students who were alerted are by and large weaker, but if they get the right help for the course, that help has more weight on that population, and we're really happy to see that. Okay, then we looked at, well, let's just do a college-wide trend analysis to see if what happened before we had any kind of early alert uh, and student support network and now that we have Starfish, do we see in general um, a decline, a decrease of unofficial withdrawals campus-wide? And um, sure enough, we saw, saw some encouraging trends. So this is on developmental courses. Uh, the red line is unofficial withdrawal rates and it's going down. It's, it goes up and down a little bit, 
So in spring, it's always a little higher, but generally the trend is going down. And fall 13 had the lowest percent of unofficial withdrawals. But official withdrawals went up. And the same, we saw actually the same, there's a registration error. Um, the same we saw for credit bearing courses. The, 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 it's even more striking. So we are very, enc very encouraged that the unofficial withdrawal rates are going down college wide, which is a good thing. Students are not impacted, their financial aid will not be as much impacted, the GPA will not be as much impacted. But with an increase in official withdrawal rates, they're not close to graduation either. So going forward, we also have to focus on that. So what's happening is students uh, come to the support centers and they might get tutoring or they might speak to an advisor and some of them realize, you know what, I really should drop this course. There's no way I can pass it. And that's why we're seeing an, an increase in official withdrawal rates. Okay, so then <clears throat> we also wanted to hear from the students and their own perspective, how they experience this outreach to them. Um, the question was, you know, do they feel intimidated? Do they feel um, the privacy is invaded if, if we contact them and advise, you know, I heard you're not doing so great. Um, how do students feel about it? Do students get the message? And um, so we had a survey in spring 13. Again, that was before we launched Starfish in fall 13, but nevertheless, over 900 students participated. And, um, and at that time, we didn't have the all-inclusive communication like we have with Starfish. So one thing we took away from the students' feedback was that more freshmen were contacted after they were alerted than continuing students because there was more support for freshmen. Uh, and that's just some breakdown how they were contacted, email being the most common. Um, but the really nice uh, finding was that by and large students really appreciated that um, they could speak to somebody outside the classroom, outside the professor, aside from the professor, that somebody's watching out for them, and then they were contacted about their academic standing. So, the percentage who said they really didn't like this was relatively small. Then we asked them, uh, in which subject area did you have difficulty this semester? <clears throat> and of course, math, not surprising, as you saw from, um, from the bar uh, chart that um, my colleague uh, showed to you, was um, the biggest um, area of difficulty. But what's interesting here is um, the the bar chart to your right uh, shows you the distribution of underrepresented minorities, and they had 63% of them said they had difficulties with math compared to 50% overall. So that was a statistically significant finding, and that's something that a vast we, virus database know, has we, been we're updated. Working on to address. Um, then we also asked them what uh, obstacles they faced outside of school. Uh, that impaired their focus and participation in the course. And these are the distribution. It was a question they could check everything that applied to them. And social family issues was on top, followed by lack of motivation, financial issues, felt underprepared for the class, um, issues with my professor, lack of student academic support. Those were a little um, lower on the distribution. So it was mostly outside issues. And then um, looking further into the data, we found that um, some of these issues were stronger among certain group. And we found that um, more women and more Hispanic students uh, said that they had family issues to deal with uh, and social issues to deal with that were obstacles to, uh, to focusing in school. So that's something that we're concerned and we will address uh, moving forward. And it's a very interesting finding. Uh, over close to 65% of students um, that were reached said they were sent to tutoring. 
and 57% uh, were asked, in addition to tutoring, take additional actions, and some of them were speak to my professor, visit financial aid, show up in class, <laughs> attend the class, complete missing work, and things like that. Um, another thing we were really happy about was that most students did not feel worse about themselves after they've been reached. Only 5% said they feel now worse about the academic standing because you're telling me I'm not doing great. So by and large, students appreciate the outreach and they feel better now. And they also, I, I'm not showing you here the, the numbers, but um, the majority of survey participants said they now feel they know where to go for help. So that was really encouraging. And students who weren't contacted, they, we couldn't get the right phone number and things like that, many of them still did uh, use support uh, services. And this is the distribution of those. So they went for tutoring also, financial aid services, and uh, computer centers, things like that. Okay, so um, to sum up the, the findings from the student feedback, by and large, very positive experience. They felt better about themselves, know where to go. Um, the drawback was that not as many were reached as we would have liked, and that was another uh, point that helped us to argue for Starfish to have a more um, integrated communication system. Now I'm gonna turn over the presentation to um, Hamadi Henderson, who will talk about faculty participation. Hello. Um, so when you implement a program like this, a uh, program like Starfish, um, into a school setting, um, you have to worry about faculty buy-in because they're going to be the ones who are using the system. They're going to be the ones implementing it. Um, and so we, um, want, I wanted to look into that data more closely. Um, and so in the fall of 2013, um, QCC made uh, the official change from the in-house um, the in-house uh, early alert program to Starfish. Um, and so we needed to, um, th they made um, extended efforts um, to get people to use this new Starfish system. And so through their efforts, we got just under 50% of faculty using the system for the fall of 2013. Um, we issued a survey for the faculty to gain more complete understanding of their usage and their sentiments on the system in the middle of the fall um, 2013 uh, semester. And out of 950 faculty, we got 333 respondents, so that's about one-third. Um, one finding from the survey was that although the faculty was offered extensive training, PDFs and videos and other materials to help them learn how to use the system, they felt that it was so intuitive that they could learn how to do it um, on their own. One respondent said that it was so easy, even a caveman could do it. Um, like literally wrote that in the survey. Um, um, we also found that the usage of the Starfish uh, system, it wasn't con concentrated um, among the classes with uh, the least prepared students. So um, as you can see from this graph, the majority of uh, <coughs> faculty felt that they only needed to flag 10% um, or very few um, of their students. So total, 50% of the faculty who responded to this question said that they needed to uh, flag under 10% of their students in their courses. Um, and you, that kind of indicates that there's a broad range or there's um, kind of spread out usage of the system across, among faculty in classes that have struggling students and faculty in classes that don't have struggling students. So um, we also asked faculty, what do they use the system for? And the majority of the faculty indicated that they use it to either refer students to academic tutoring, notify students of their academic standing, and alert um, academic advisors about students. So those were the big usages of the system. When we looked at the data more closely, um, we broke it down based on the field in which um, the faculty reported um, teaching in, and we found that faculty members in the academic literacy, business, health-related sciences, and STEM fields um, use the system more than faculty in other fields um, 
to uh, refer students to academic tutoring. Uh, faculty in the academic literacy field and the visual and performing arts use the system more so than faculty in other fields um, to, to alert advisors about students' um, academic standing. Um, when we asked uh, the faculty um, whether or not they would use this system in the future or whether they would continue to use the system, um, we had 83% of the faculty responded yes, they would continue. Um, when we looked into that data a little more, more closely, we found that the respondents who agreed that they would continue to use the system were comprised of individuals who um, noticed a change in their students' performance, believed QCC offered sufficient resources to help students, um, and also um, were informed of the outcomes of the raised flag. So this, those were faculty who, um, they raised the flag, they found out from the counselor or whomever that the student you know, went to tutoring or got help or whatever. Um, basically, the people who had either one of, the, one of those three categories, they most li more likely wanted to continue to use the system. So we also conducted a focus group um, just to get a little, just to get even more data um, about the, how the faculty felt about the system. And um, ba generally the faculty had a very positive look on this Starfish Early Alert system. Um, one of the issues that came up among the faculty who weren't currently using the system was that they felt that Using a Starfish Early Alert system among college students was like babying them. It, it, they, the students should know their academic standing. They don't need me to tell me, a faculty member, to tell them that they're failing. And when we talked to the uh, to faculty members in the focus group, um, they said, "Well, no, it's not babying the students. It's informing them. It actually." forces them or gives them the opportunity to take on more responsibility because you're letting them know that they have this problem, they have an academic problem, it's not going to go away. So they have to decide, are they going to do something or um, are they just going to sit there and not do anything? And so they felt that basically it gives the students the opportunity to take more control um, of their education. Um, Faculty also, some faculty also noted changes in students' behavior um, and um, academic performance as a result of them using Starfish. Um, one faculty member in the focus group was talking about how she had um, a pair of students who kept talking to each other in the class. Um, and she kept telling them, you know, sit, sit in different places in the class, don't talk to each other, you know, you're being disruptive. Um, and they didn't listen to her. And then, um, so she used the Starfish system. She, basically starfished them. And then when the, um, when the students found out about it, you know, the students, of course, sat in different seats. They weren't talking in class anymore. You know, they had a, uh, they came to Jesus, so to speak. Um, and basically they changed their behavior. And w what it seems to be is that the, a lot of times the students didn't even know that it was the faculty members themselves telling, um, writing these notes in starfish and things like that. So it was kind of like they thought that there was this, you know, watchdog, this um, big brother kind of watching over them, and they were worried that, you know, it's going to follow, whatever notes were put in the starfish system might follow them to the end of their days. So they wanted to, you know, modify their behavior just to prevent something like that from happening. Um, but um, the faculty did have some lingering misconceptions about how to use the system. Um, Margot mentioned earlier about um, you can use the system during, um, so you can set up the system so that you re flag students during scheduled alert periods, or you can um, flag students during whenever. You can flag them if you feel like there's a really big problem at any given time, you can flag them. And a lot of the faculty um, thought that you can only use the system during the alert period. And so there was this big issue of um, these alert periods don't match up with my testing periods. I only give, you know, a midterm and a final, and, you know, we have six scheduled alert periods. So that doesn't match up. So they, they were having um, issues with that. And also there were logistical issues and technical issues with regards to faculty members receiving, feeling that they were receiving too many reminder emails. They were annoyed by not being able to log into the system sometimes. It was little things like that that I would say happened with a lot of systems. But all in all, the faculty had a very positive outlook um, in using the system. And as you could see, the majority uh, felt that they would, would like to continue using the system. 
So now I'm going to switch things over back to Margo. All right, so we've given you a lot of information and you either have a ton of questions or none because you don't know what to ask. Um, what we're planning on doing going forward is obviously now that we have 49% of faculty participating, we have a lot more students that we have to do some numbers crunching on. So going forward, we're going to be evaluating the results of this semester. We're continuing the Starfish system for the spring semester, which will start the 27th of January. I know it's weird. In New York, our spring starts in, semester starts in January. but. Um, we are going to continue to do this. We will continue to f touch base with faculty and with students to see how the system is working for them. Uh, we'll continue to get feedback, um, not only on the assessment of how students are doing as a result of this and follow them longitudinally, but to continue to add uh, support systems. Uh, we have yet to really talk to people who are, you know, besides the students who are a large group that are impacted by it, our learning centers and our advisors are impacted by this because this is a significant contribution to their workload. We have more students going and we don't have any more resources necessarily um, for those same students. Um, the learning centers, I've heard, you know, anecdotal stories, they're packed. Uh, the advisors are saying that they're very, very busy trying to enroll students for the next semester or help them do advisement as well as to reach out to students. So we need to start looking at what we can do to tailor the system to help them even further. Even though there's some things that they can do with the system, we need to look at that aspect of it. So. We have two jobs with our study of the system. It's how is it working for the students, how are we impacting it, and how can we continue to refine the system so that it works better and that the communication, the lines of communication are open and functioning the way we'd like them to. Um, and we need to do those things because we want to increase faculty participation in it. And if the rest of it isn't working, what's going, what will happen, uh, is that participation will drop. If we, they feel that, no, the advisors can't keep up with the workload, the, the students are going to tutoring and they can't get an appointment because it's packed, all of this good work will be for naught. So we really need to keep a check on the system and make sure that everything's functioning as it should and at capacity. So um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. Sure. That's okay. The platform that you're using for the uh, early alert system are based on are based in a smartphone. The the fact that you use a page yeah. or, or a what screen. We're, what we're using is Starfish retention systems. It's a login system. They log in, and we've designed it so they can log in using the same login username and password as their faculty email. When they log into the email system, they can access it through our web page, but we also send them an email with the link to the system that they can log in and that they can flag the students in that system. And right now, primarily what we're doing is we're contacting students by a phone call, but more often through email and through their college email to get them. Uh, we haven't gone to emails, uh, to text messaging or getting students, the students decide which is their primary phone number, so they may designate that it's a, a cell phone and we may contact them through the cell number if we can't reach them through email, but we haven't gone to texting yet because as much as they do read their texts, we're also mindful that not everybody has a program where the texts are unlimited. Some of them pay for that, so we're trying to balance that contact. So it's primarily an email and then a follow-up with a phone call, that, that personal touch. Okay. Just, I have another, another question to sure. you. The system is, is linked to the main information system or is a, or you need to uh, download the, the information of the student to the, to the system? Um, the, it, way it's, it, the way it it's, our IT system worked with, um, it's a separate system, but our IT department worked with uh, support from Starfish Retention Systems, which is the platform we're using, to merge that so that the Starfish data can be pulled from our system. Okay. So it does take some work to customize it to your system, but it can be done so that it will pull the information so and populate. And, and yeah, interface. so you have your current roster. So in other words, I'm also teaching, so I have my current roster. Then when I log in, I have my current roster. You're welcome. Uh, I do have a question. Sure. Uh, are you uh, using a learning management system besides a Starfish? And if you are, is Starfish uh, linked to the uh, courses within the learning management system? 
Not at the moment, right? Uh, right. Uh, yes, we do have a learning management system, but they're not linked at this moment. Yeah. Okay, so faculty have to log in. If, if, if they're offering a, a, a blended course or a fully online yeah. course, they have to log in to Starfish, which is a, which is a separate system, yes. in order to early alert students. And part of the reason for that is, um, right now, <coughs> I think in CUNY, are we the only ones using Starfish so far? Yes. And so we're trying to get them, the Starfish itself is designed to work with Blackboard and some other systems, but since we're the only ones in CUNY using it and not when you're yet. in a big system, yeah, not yet, basically not yet, because we're the only ones, so they haven't developed a connection for that. So that is problematic, and that is why we try to make it as simple as possible so there wasn't a third login, at least let it be the same as the email, because then they only have to remember that and so on. Any other questions, or is everybody ready for the party? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes, please. Let's, let's give them a round of applause because <laughs> uh, on a Friday here in Puerto Rico with the sun out and we're celebrating this week in the uh, Fiesta de San Sebastián, so it's very difficult to have a lot of people uh, listening on this on a Friday afternoon. And again, uh, thank you, uh, all four of you, for an excellent presentation. Uh, we hope in, 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 in the future that uh, we have an update on what's going on with your Starfish system and the early alert with stu uh, students and see how we can increase that retention rate among uh, Hispanics uh, and other uh, student populations. Well, thank you again, and with this we conclude uh, this afternoon's uh, session. Uh, in a few minutes we're going to have a reception outside, so all of you are welcome to, to join us and, and network with uh, other colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Excellent we'll, we'll job. We'll be back in 2016. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know you will. Thank you very much. <laughs>